who is strongest in our universe? This tournament answers to it. Now let's get started. Hey everyone, it's Dash. Now I'm bringing here the game 2 of the first Cosmo title match, supported by 81squareuniverse.com. Now let me explain 81 Square Universe Championships. Actually, we have two titles in these championships. One is 81-0. Well, I've already covered this title match. I played between Telmarch and one, and that was great. So here we are uh, now covering Cosmo Tournament. Uh, so uh, obviously, 81 is taken from uh, 81 Square, and well, Cos Cosmo means the universe, so it's named after universe. So it's kind of the tournament that decides the best, the strongest in our universe. So now let's take a look at the tournament diagram here. So game one of the finals is already being played, and Koshiro took that game. So we're going to see the second game. So let me introduce the players. Uh, one of the players is Koshiro from Brazil. So look at this diagram. It's coming up from the left side. He beat two Japanese. One is Kei Shogi. He beat here. And uh, he came all the way up to here beating me, Hidechi. So he's on the finals. Yeah, he sure is a good player. And on the other hand, on the right side, here's Kartem from Germany. And, well, it shows how great he is too. Because you see on the third game, he beat Telmarch, the title holder of the uh, 81 0. And then he beat another. Uh, great player one eye. Uh, she was a player of the title match of 81 0. So she, he beat two players of 81 0 title match and now he came up to the finals. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, so, uh, what's going to happen in the, in the second game? Now, let's see. All right, now Koshiro played black here. He played uh, pawn 7f, 3d, 2f, and 8d. So it seems they're going for a uh, side pawn picker opening. And actually, they did that pawn 2e, 8e, gold 7h, gold 3b, uh, pawn 2d, 2d, rook 2d. And they go along the Joseki actually. So uh, another pawn exchange on the 8th file, rook takes n, rook takes a side pawn on 3d. Well, what is so surprising about, uh, you know, these title matches in 81squareuniverse.com, uh, they know Joseki so well. I'm really surprised about that. So... Actually, they go along Joski uh, pretty further uh, into the, um, the middle game. So, pawn drop, rook to 80. So, Kartham has chosen bishop 3c defense in combination with rook 8e strategy. Uh, one of the latest Joseki in professional players. Uh, so, rook to 2f. Uh, I mean, he has to do that because now rook can uh, swing to 2e. It's not good for black. So, black attacks here. And black is now threatening to uh, take out this bishop in next moves. And I won't explain the detail about what has to protect the gold with the king. Okay, now king to 6h. Okay, one of the Josie king. Well, sometimes uh, they develop um, these uh, pieces or king to 5h. But yeah, he chose this one. Okay, now silver to 6b. Silver to 3h and gold to 5a. Now this castle is called Nakahara's king. Its strongest point is that it's strong against rook drop on from from the side, so we can go for rook exchange. Okay, now pawn three f. Okay, now black is starting to attack attack the knight's head. Uh, I mean knight's head because after bishop exchange, the knight has to recapture, and he's going to develop the knight or maybe the silver. Yeah. So uh, white that's it to pawn seven d, uh, making and uh, developing way for the knight and also. Yeah, he wants to make a pawn exchange in the seventh file. Okay, now pawn the four f. All right, now white develops a knight to seven c, and black develops a knight to three g. Okay, now white's preparation for attack is made too. So maybe white should now attack. You know, uh, the rook's protection on this pawn is blocked with two of his pawns. So uh, this is time when white uh, white should attack. And one way, uh, one of the common way is to uh, attack here. Uh, but why shows this line uh, attacking here, going for the the side pawn? Okay, 
So pawn takes rook takes. And one of the joseki here is to push up this pawn or maybe push up this pawn to uh, indirectly uh, put pressure to this rook. Okay. But black uh, simply drop the pawn seven uh, seven g. Sorry, eight g. So uh, rook takes seven f. And then uh, white extend his pawn up to forty. Okay. Now, well, this pawn push is very uh, strong because a very big point for black because you know he can basically now block the bishop. And once black gets rid of this pawn, black has future pawn drops uh, to harass the king, and that's a very big point. Okay, now white plays pawn drop to two e. A very cool tactic uh, that often happens in this strategy because if the knight takes, now bishop can uh, exchange and pawn drop, and the knight will be dead, right? So uh, actually, he can't take it with the knight. Well, he can take it with the rook, but he chose not to take it and move the rook back to two eye. It's more stable. And uh, anyway, white's gonna now take the pawn on the three f, right? So he takes that. Okay, now pawn to four d. Okay, he blocked the bishop. So maybe at this position, uh, naturally, white should uh, just take it. Well, black can get the initiative now. Black has its turn, but it's, it's still a difficult uh, position. Uh, but white showed some pretty interesting uh, idea. Rook to 4f, kind of uh, aiming at the gold and, uh, you know, defending this file. Uh, that's interesting. But maybe it gave some... Uh, kind of chance to black because now black can take the pawn on two e with the knight this time because well bishop has to run to oh one option is four uh, two d and it seems fine actually but it doesn't seem so comfortable for white you know you know once this promotes and rook recaptures you know this bishop is attacking here uh, rook is indirectly attacking here I can sack itself anytime maybe checking promoting whatever so kind of uncomfortable to do that so uh, white has white had to took the pawn on 4d but the difference now is black can take the bishop from his side and after rook recaptures now it's black's turn to play so white can't take the knight by dropping a pawn to 2d and it's black who can drop a pawn here so drop pawn drop to 3c well it seems black is doing better here uh, already because if knight takes it, knight promotion, and uh, it's a disaster for white. So uh, white could only uh, move the gold back to 3a. But yes, Koshiro found a very good tactic here. Can you find this move? Uh, find his next move. It's pretty cool. It's pawn drop on 2c. Has to take it, and knight promotion on 1c. Sacrifice. Okay, now this is discovery attack on the silver. So it's kind of cool. Well, but Kartham can uh, hang in here because there are plenty of ways to um, stop this rook from promoting. You know, you can drop a pawn here, pawn, or here. Well, let's, for example, so let's see, pawn drop in 3G. And if it takes. Oh, I can calmly take back the knight because, you know, if black takes it, well, I can take this gold, right? So, uh, one interesting point is uh, pawn drop. So, maybe black now uh, promotes the rook, promotes the pawn or something like that. Or, uh, which is much better, why can once save his silver, right? Uh, because of this protection. And then, after this... Uh, promoted knight can come over maybe he can do that now I don't know maybe black can actually take this silver with the rook or maybe pawn drop on 4e uh, I don't know so it's kind of a pretty difficult position still but now let's see what Carson did uh, he dropped the pawn to 2h okay okay hey, this is another option now black has to take it okay another pawn drop rook takes so maybe uh, what he's doing, trying to do is pawn drop, rook takes, pawn drop, rook takes, pawn drop. Oh, I mean, maybe he can even move the silver. Uh, well, I don't know, pawn drop. So maybe, maybe uh, calmly pawn drop. So that was one option. But 
it wasn't his idea. His idea here, oh sorry, here was to drop a bishop to 40. Well, it was kind of interesting because um, attacking the rook and also uh, kind of protecting this zero. Black now made his decision and promoted rook to 2c, taking the zero. Winning material. Bishop takes, promoted knight takes. But white has now got a rook. Where does he wants to drop it? Well, one in, well, one option was pawn drop, of course. But well, black can yeah block the rook, for example. So uh, well, white shows this line rook drop on two h. Okay, now attack the promoted pawn, and what is threatening here? You see it? Yeah, he can now take this gold in the next move because this zero is pinned, right? You see it's pinned. So yeah, kind of good tactic, but black can drop a zero to three b, protecting the promoted pawn simultaneously. Checking uh, if gold takes black and save his knight, uh, so he ran, but the knight is protected, so he can now calmly move the gold to three i, running away from this rook's attack and also attacking this rook. Pretty good. Okay, uh, should he now sack the rook and promote? No, no, uh, maybe that's not enough. So, you know, White chose to um, take the silver now. Hmm, kind of interesting. Now, Black can take it, but White can now take it. So, he calmly uh, took it to promote it knight, and he promoted the rook. Uh, 2f, actually. Right now, obviously, White's escaping route is uh, here. So, he dropped the bishop to 7b. Very good attack. Approach the king by surrounding him. The uh, the proverb says that, and uh, you see the threat mate. Threat mate starting from bishop drop on six a, gold takes and gold drop on four b. So it's a threat mate. So he extends the pawn up to five d, making an escape for the king. But bishop drop on three a, uh, once again covering this square. So back and drop a gold next move or a gold here, uh, which might be uh, even better. So uh, he plays zero to five c, but bishop promotion to eight c. Well, all of a sudden he's showing us a very steady attack, because uh, you know Black's king is pretty safe. Uh, this goal is doing a pretty uh, great job covering this square. Okay, so knight to six c, very good. Running away from the horse and Black, why can sack anytime? Well, it's not a big deal right now, but kind of very uncomfortable for black. He has to read everything after knight sacrifice, right? What happens after that? But uh, actually it's fine at this position. So he moved the horse to 7c. Now even approaching. Okay, now why drop the silver to 60? Trying to get rid of that horse. Well, I guess he should have dropped it to here. Because uh, that's a very uh, good castle kind of good castle, uh, but he dropped here, and at this instant, uh, Koshiro read everything. He checked this line, and uh, he figured that he can give bishop to white and it's fine, so he now took out the gold, king recaptures, and make this all, uh, attack almost a brinkmate. So the question is now black's king is made or not, but Koshiro says it's not. Uh, knight promotion. Yeah, he did that. King takes and bishop uh, drop him 2d. Okay, pretty in danger. Uh, okay, not very comfortable for black, but uh, yeah, this is the only square he can go to. Dragon to 5f. Run to 6a, 6i. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, this square is covered, so he's okay. Okay, very close. Okay, now bishop sacks, king takes. And well, he dropped that zero to four a, uh, protecting uh, this square. Uh, but it doesn't make a difference because he's still a mate with this pawn drop. Okay, so king takes, bishop takes, bishop drop, king runs. Another pawn drop is a checkmate. So Kartham resigned it right here, and Koshiro took the game two games in a row and became the first Cosmo. So congratulations for Koshiro. And congratulations for uh, Kartham too for uh, for becoming the finalist. And you know, thanks for showing us very uh, these two great games to us.
So now that we've seen two title matches, 810 and uh, Cosmo, let me cover a little bit about the next term. Well, I'm not sure next Cosmo tournament is, is going to start or not, but uh, well, second term 810 league is now already going. Okay, the title holders tell much, you know that. And uh, including tell much, actually, we have uh, as many as 50 players participating in the second term. Uh, unbelievable. Okay, A class uh, consists of 10 best players. I'm here, actually. I was barely uh, in the A class. Okay, B class. Now, C classes are um, new players. Well, Koshiro is here, actually, because he's a new player. Uh, he already got one win. And we have a great name here. Takodori is now in the 81 0 league. Well, actually, we got four Japanese guys playing this time, uh, including Takodori and Samurai Blue. Kind of a cool name. So, it's going to be an exciting term, too. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.